Let's talk about the singleton design pattern. So this has kind of been phased out and something better has come up and we're going to talk about that. So what is a singleton? Well, ensures a class has only one instance and provide a global point of access to it. Okay, sounds great in theory. Now, how do you actually implement it? And there's tons of ways of doing a singleton design pattern. Most of them, and I'm guilty of this myself, most of those implementations are horribly wrong. Why? Think of it in terms of threading. You have one instance, global point of access, and all these threads are going to come smashing into this instance and do things with it. Well, threads have their own problems. You're going to have deadlocks, race conditions, concurrency issues, and so on and so forth. And we can sit here all day and talk about it. So singleton's been kind of phased out, but definitely feel free to read up on it. There's some great examples and singleton for other languages that are not, I want to say, as in-depth or as powerful as C++ really don't have the same issues that C++ has. So for C++, we're going to use the C++11 magic static. And I cannot take credit for this. This is Mark Gregory's class and it is the singleton class and I think it's on, am I saying this right, nuancesoft.com? I'm going to put a link to their blog here. This thing is just dead simple. I mean, it's straightforward, and we're going to run it and use it. So we're going to change it around a little bit, as you would expect. So what are we talking about? A singleton pattern or a C++ magic static. Basic premise here is only one instance of the class. Why? Sometimes you want to in, you know, really limit how many instances you have. So for example, you wanted like a global timer or something like that. Now think of it like a logger. You wanted to be able to write to a log, but you have 15 threads. Well, obviously you can't open the file in write mode 15 times. You'll get locks and race conditions and things like that. We're going to dial it down very, very simply, make it very simple to understand. We just have a simple little Q object, nothing special in here whatsoever just created, destroyed, and then displays a message. And we're going to use this singleton class. Now, where's the magic? It's right here. Static T get instance. So it's a templated class and we're saying get instance T static. What does that really mean? Static means there's only one instance of this. So it's just going to return that instance. It's incredibly powerful. So, we have a constructor, a deconstructor, and then we've got a bunch of operators that are removed. This is where the other part of the magic comes in. We make sure that we can't accidentally goof this up. When in doubt, leave those alone. All right, let's jump in here. We're going to make two functions. Scope test. And probably help if I actually made that a function. And let's call this void loop test. So what do we really have here? Three different scopes. So hmm, let's go down here and let's call these. We're going to say scope test. And then I'm going to say loop test. And let's go to scope test first. I say singleton, and we're going to give it the my class because this is templated. Remember, we're going to get instance, and notice how this is going to return reference to the my class instance. And I'm going to just say set object name, and let's call this. Uh, I need like a really, really strong name, like Godzilla. I don't know. I just I struggled coming up with names <laughs> anyways so we can take this global instance here and we can say display from scope test and we can actually just take this let's go starting loop my horrible spelling mistakes. I get too excited and then I type too fast and then everything stops working. So let's say finished loop 
And then let's just do something really stupid, like for int uh, i equals zero, i is less than 10. Let's go ahead and increment i. I mean, just something ridiculously mind-numbingly stupid. Just to show that it's working. And because I just feel like it, we're going to actually grab this. And I'm going to say hello from main. And let's go ahead and go Q info just to show that we can actually work with the actual class, not just some weird C thing. I'm going to get that object name back that we set in an entirely different scope right up here. This is incredibly cool. Save and run. Sure enough, we have created my class and we set the name to Godzilla and it's from scope test starting and finishing a loop and then hello from main and there is only one Godzilla. So my nickname for C++ Magic Statics is of course Godzilla because there's one and only one. This is extremely cool and extremely powerful and unlike the singleton design pattern that we've talked about over here, this does not have any of the baked in issues with threading because it's going to return one and only one and a static. Voila. Now comes with the disclaimer that just because it's a magic static doesn't mean it's purely thread safe. If you start doing things like manipulating a value or working with IO or anything like that, you may have some threading issues. So you'll have to work with that appropriately based off your specific situation.